Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy, and if you don't know me, I have a passion for upcycling clothing and I teach sewing on here. I'm so excited to finally share this mini pleated skirt tutorial with you guys. After I posted the draping video of me making this skirt, everyone just was so excited for the sewing pattern. As always, I created a digital sewing pattern, so it's available on my Etsy shop. Materials needed for this project are two yards of any woven fabrics. I upcycled a men's blazer, so I used a lightweight wool. You're going to need about a yard for your lining of this skirt, and I used silk charmeuse because it's what I had on hand. You also need a nine inch invisible zipper. So yeah, let's get into this tutorial. Start by taking your fabric and cut out all of your pattern pieces. So this is the blazer that I'm upcycling. So I just start by cutting at the shoulder and just try to get the most out of this fabric. Realized as I was like cutting up this blazer that I wasn't going to have enough fabric So that's why my design is the way it is now So it's like asymmetrical at the front of the skirt So only one side's pleated and the other side is flat So you can see that here I am like piecing parts of the blazer together and just matching up that plaid So it's like seamless when it's all finished I end up patchworking this part and then I'm able to cut out the other front part of this skirt I also went ahead and repatched the sleeve together just so the plaid was going to match up again. I'm just very conscious of the pattern and making sure it's lined up. The front and the back waistband are cut on the bias so I just had to make sure I had enough fabric to do that and I just had enough. After you cut out all of your pieces, take the bottom part of your skirt and I like to hem all of those pieces first just so it's easier to pleat. Take it to my overlock machine and do a rolled hem on this and it comes out really nice. You can see that the thread just kind of like encases the entire raw edge creating a really nice finished look. I know not everyone has this so if you just have a regular sewing machine it's okay just add a half inch seam allowance to your hemline so you're able to do a baby hem and now to actually pleat our skirt you need to take your front tier that's pleated and first start by marking a half inch seam allowance this is going to be sewn at the side seam so just mark that and then from that line you're going to mark five eighths of an inch away that is our pleat width and then our pleat pickup will be a half inch. So from the 5 eighths line, mark a half inch, and then you're gonna mark from the half inch line, mark 5 eighths of an inch away for your next pleat, and then a half inch again for your pleat pickup, and just keep repeating this. So there's a lot going on with the plaid fabric, so let me try to show you on paper instead, it'll make more sense. So you're first marking your half inch seam allowance, and from that point, you're gonna mark 5 eighths of an inch away from that. That is your pleat width. From the 5 eighths mark, you're gonna mark a half inch. And you can see from that line to that line, we're going to actually fold our fabric. So from that half inch mark, you're folding to the other side. You can see that only the 5 eighths pleat width is exposed. So when we fold, we're encasing that half inch pleat depth. And you're just going to continue to do this until you reach the other side of your skirt. I just recommend marking a little bit so you don't get so overwhelmed by all the markings on your piece. And just start pleating like three pleats or four at a time. Pin it all in place and take it to your iron and just iron those pleats as best as you can. Make sure your steam is on. Steam is your friend when it comes to pleats using glass head pins so it doesn't matter if I put my iron on top of them it's gonna be fine make sure when you get to the end you're leaving space for a half inch seam allowance
take pattern piece three, which is the unpleated one, and place pattern piece four on top, which is the pleated one, and just pin those two together at the top. Take it to your sewing machine and do a stay stitch a quarter inch away. And patience is your friend when you're sewing this together. Sew as close as you can to the next pin and then pause and take it out and then keep sewing. You just want to make sure that your pleats are sewn down perfectly and nothing gets caught. So just take this very slow. This is pattern piece five, this is the back of the skirt. So we're going to be doing the same exact thing we did for the pleated part of the skirt at the front. We're just marking a half inch seam allowance and then five eighths of an inch away, which is our pleat width, then a half inch for the pleat depth. So we're just marking this and pleating our fabric once again. Take your time, pin a few pleats, take it to the iron and just give it some steam. You can go ahead and just remove the pins everywhere except the top of the pleats. Take it to the sewing machine and do a quarter inch stay stitch, ensuring that once again those pleats stay in place. Now we can move on to attaching the waistband. Take your back waistband and the back of the bottom skirt and mark the center of that. Pin right sides together. Pin it along that seam and take it to your sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. We're going to repeat the same exact steps to the front of the skirt, placing right sides together and pin along that seam. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. After attaching the waistband, I like to overlock my seam allowance. After you overlock that seam allowance, push it up and overlock the sides. I like to take my tailor's ham and just my iron and just give that seam a good press. So just make sure you're pushing that seam allowance up and ironing that in place. I'm gonna do a quarter inch top stitch above that seam just so I can hold that seam allowance in place. This part is completely optional so you don't need to do your elastic and ring and slide detail if you don't want to. I'm using ribbon for this part just because it's all I had um, that matched the garment, but I recommend using an elastic instead of a ribbon because it'll hug the body. Take your elastic and cut two pieces that are about 18 inches long and just take a lighter and just kind of burn those ends just so they don't fray. And you're going to cut out two tabs that are two inches long Take a tab and a ring and just feed that tab through the ring. Fold those two ends together and just place a pin. Take the long piece and your slider. So I'm using these really cute heart sliders. I've linked them down below if you want to use these exact sliders. So after you feed it up and through that slide, you're going to just leave enough room for seam allowance at the top and just kind of fold that inward, pin that in place. Take it to your sewing machine, tack that down, and tack down the tabs also so it doesn't move around. Once that is tacked down in place, see you are going to make it adjustable. So now have your elastic with that seam allowance facing up on the slide, and then just feed that ring through it. And now you can just like feed the other end up and down that slide 
and when you pull it you can see now we have a strap that is adjustable and it's ready to be sewn into our garment. Feel free to place these anywhere you want. On the pattern I've marked where I placed mine so this is also up to you. You can definitely add more of these if you want or you could just do one. You get to the sewing machine and just follow the edge of your presser foot and just tack those in place. And I almost forgot you need to take some stay tape and just measure out seven inches for your zipper. So we need to add this fusible to the wearer's left side. So make sure the wrong side is facing you and that the bubbly side of the stay tape is facing the fabric. You're just gonna take that piece and make sure wherever you need to slash so it kind of like follows that curve on the skirt. Match it up with your pattern. Take your iron and just iron it on. This is going to stabilize the fabric so it's a lot easier to sew your zipper in. Repeat it to back on the wearer's left side. Your front and back skirt and place right sides together. Pin along that side seam, the one without the zipper, so just pin it and match it up. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. Push that seam allowance towards the back. Stay stitch at the waistline just because this part's cut on the bias and we just don't want it to grow. And I went ahead and just overlocked that. And with right sides still facing together, you can pin along the other side seam, but only from the bottom of the stay tape to the bottom of the hem. So pin along that and just take it to your sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. So you wanna just back tack when you get to that stay tape and then go all the way down and back tack at the hem. I've done an invisible zipper tutorial before, so I can link that video, but I've also linked a video where she goes over how to insert an invisible zipper so perfectly, and she also shows you how to add a lining, so you guys can watch that video. Very important to first press your invisible zipper teeth open, so you just wanna take your iron and just like push it alongside those zipper teeth, but don't put it on the coil or else you're going to melt it and ruin your zipper, so just do it right alongside. It'll push the coil up and it'll be so much easier to feed it through your invisible zipper foot. Another trick I like to do when I'm installing an invisible zipper is to just hand baste it in place after I pin it in place, just because I don't like sewing an invisible zipper when I have pins in the way, because I just feel like it messes me up personally, so it makes it so much easier if I just have it basted first, and then I'm able to just like zip it up and just make sure everything matches up. If you don't already own an invisible zipper foot, I recommend an investing in one. The coil just glides perfectly inside that foot. The machine just stitches as close as humanly possible. It makes your invisible zipper look flawless. I only did a half lining, but if your seams are not finished on the inside, I do recommend doing a full lining. So all you would do is take a ruler and extend your lines at the side seam, and then from the waist, just measure out your length. Then everything will just be on the inside and you won't even see those raw edges. I decided to place some more stay tape along the waist and the wearer's left side, just so everything is stabilized, especially since I'm using a silk for the lining. I place right sides together and pin along the side without the zipper, take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. Then I go ahead and just overlock all the way around this piece. I take my lining and place right sides together. Take the lining and match up the side seams and place right sides together, just pinning it along the waist of the skirt. And make sure you pin two inches away from that zipper so you have enough room to do that clean finished edge on the zipper. Take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch seam allowance. Make sure you start and stop two inches away from that zipper opening.
then I go ahead and just fold that seam allowance towards the lining and do a sixteenth of an inch understitch all the way from the start and stop of the two inches away from the zipper opening. I went ahead and finishing the top of that zipper so it's like really nice and crisp. So watch that tutorial I've linked, she explains it so well. And look how stunning that invisible zipper looks and look at those crisp points. So now I'm taking the lining, matching it up to that hip seam. So I'm just taking a pin and just like hand tacking where I need to. So you want to just hand tack like every two, three inches. Um, you could also just pin this and do like a stitch in the ditch if you want to have your lining completely flushed against your skirt. And your skirt is complete. Nos hablamos pero no nos vemos. Baby, hace tiempo que yo estoy pa ti. Y tú hace tiempo que ya estás pa mí. Hace tiempo que no lo prendemos. Nos hablamos pero no nos vemos. Baby, hace tiempo que yo estoy pa ti. Y tú hace tiempo que ya estás pa mí. Cuando pongo una de Nicky me acuerdo de ti. Las noches son más largas y estoy sin ti. Vamos pa'l party, después pa' tu habitación Tú bailando y un speaker Piensas en mi bebé Aquí ni se presta ni se fía Manden lo que quieren que ella es mía I hope you guys enjoyed this mini pleated skirt tutorial and if you do recreate it, don't forget to tag me on Instagram. I would love to see your final skirts. My handle is at Transformations by Tracy. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really is the best way to support your favorite creators for free. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.